one more verse here in 1st Corinthians 6:17 where it says about being one spirit with the Lord. 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. There also it says about that union with the Lord. That uh, bridal union with the Lord. Uh, in the previous verse verse uh, 1st Corinthians 6:16 says about the you know if some uh, one, uh, one is one with the harlot two shall become one flesh then as contrast to that it says in verse 17 but the one who joins himself to the lord is one spirit with him you know verse 16 uh, first corinthians 6:16 spe- speaks about a physical union then we can say say you know spiritual equivalent of the babylon where it's a harlot babylon is referred to a harlot or as a false christianity where somebody is professing to follow christ but he is actually his allegiance is to the world and the world system that is a harlotry friendship with the world is an enmity with god that is adultery spiritual adultery uh, james 4 4 also says that here then as contrast to that uh, as contrast to the babylon in verse 16 the jerusalem the new jerusalem the true church what is the true church's character we are supposed to join him join ourselves with the lord jesus to be one spirit with him how can we be one spirit with him we can be one spirit with him only when the holy spirit floods our heart floods our spirit and the whole being and how can the holy spirit flood our hearts only if we surrender ourselves as a living sacrifice unto the lord yesterday also we were seeing when we uh, present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto the lord romans 12 one says that they we surrender ourselves part by part and say that lord my eyes and my tongue and my feet and my hands and my mind and my brain and belongings and uh, everything lord everything belongs to you i surrender myself the one thing that prevents us from having fellowship with god is our self will which the bible calls our flesh that is the symbolic of that veil that thick veil in the temple at jerusalem and even in the tabernacle which separated the most holy place from the holy place when jesus died that flesh was rent and now that way is inaugurated the new and living way is inaugurated we read that in hebrews 10 19 and 20 but in our life how can we walk that new and living way and enter into god's presence where we can have fellowship with him the in our life this in jesus life that flesh was rent in our life our flesh or our self life has to be put on the cross or it has to be rent it has to be torn in our lives when we tell the lord lord not my will but your will that is what we happen when we surrender ourselves as a living sacrifice when we surrender ourselves when when we surrender our eyes and when we surrender our tongue and when we surrender our hands and feet and mind and everything we are saying lord I do not want my will in any, in any of these areas. I surrender myself. I humble myself, Lord. Surrendering ourselves is actually humbling ourselves and saying that, Lord, I'm just a zero. You know that uh, I, my ego, I want things this way. Why did you did not? Uh, why why did you not treat me the way I wanted? You know, probably our spouse or our children or our parents or our neighbor or colleagues or friends, or this that or the other. why did you treat me like this i am a maharaja i am i have this great ego and that is what really hinders us from having fellowship with god that really you know god's great longing is that we should have that fellowship with him but what really hinders is this thick veil in our life that self will and that cannot be just torn easily like that in one day it has to be slowly torn every day that is what jesus says uh, if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow after me luke 9 23 every day there should be a tearing little more of that veil little more of that veil so that more and more entry into that most holy place where i have fellowship with jesus and where i become more like jesus so every situations in every situation if we can grab every situation to humble ourselves yeah, when others mistreat us or misunderstand us when others treat us the wrong way even when others uh, what to say appreciate and praise and 
thank God. So that time also to die to ourselves. It's like, you know, if a dead body is there, even if you praise that uh, dead body or even if you kick that dead body, that dead body doesn't have any response because it is dead, doesn't have life. Like that, our flesh has to be put to death. Our flesh means our self-will. When Jesus says, take up your cross, actually what are we crucifying? We are crucifying our self-life or our soul life. Or in that self-will that that has to be put on the cross and how that can be put on the cross you know it is the word of god and the holy spirit who has to operate upon our flesh to put it to death word of god is compared to a two edged sword in hebrews 4:12 and we say fiery sword we read about that fiery sword in genesis 3:24 the cherubim the cherubim uh, which was given charge to guard the way to the tree of life was having a fiery sword a flaming sword that flame speaks about the holy spirit and the sword is the word of god so today when i am faced with different situations when i humble myself and say that lord i am a zero let me die to myself i humble myself i surrender myself as a living sacrifice there what happens there the word of god is the will of god that is this vertical it, it can be compared to the vertical plank of the cross the vertical plank comes there my will is the horizontal plank and the word of god the sword comes upon with the uh, the fire and the sword comes upon this my will and uh, there you know perpendicularly there is a cross where my will is slain and god's will takes place so there when i surrender myself when i humble myself in different situations what happens i am allowing the word of god and the holy spirit to put to death the deeds of my body that is what we read there in romans 8:13 the latter part if by the spirit if by the holy spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live where when we surrender ourselves when we humble ourselves the holy spirit will flood our hearts when we surrender ourselves the living sacrifice romans 12:1 just like the fire of heaven descended on the burnt offering in the old testament the fire of heaven the holy spirit will descend upon us and fill our hearts and will help us to put to death the deeds of our body and there will be death in ourselves and there will be resurrection life in our spirit and that veil will be torn little more and we will be entering the most holy place where we have it no access to the heart of god where we know god where we become one spirit with him when we are filled with the holy spirit and when we are in the presence of god in that blessed fellowship with him there we are in that oneness with god that is what the psalmist says in psalm 16 with that i will close psalm 16 psalm 16 verse 11 it says you will make known to me psalm 16 verse 11 <coughs> you will make known to be the path of life what is this path of life the new and living way that we read from hebrews 10 19 and 20 that is a path of life that is the way to the tree of life which we read in genesis 3 24 that is a way of escape in first corinthians 10 13 that is the uh, narrow way that jesus spoke of in matthew 7 13 and 14 <coughs> that way god only has to make known to us the path of life in different situation of our life when we surrender ourselves the lord will help us to see that path of life jesus said narrow is that way and few uh, and if and few who find it only few people can find that narrow way because it is such a small way <laughs> when we surrender ourselves and become a z- smaller than this uh, you know <laughs> uh, smaller than the eye of a needle then we can easily enter that narrow way <laughs> when we when we are so big with our ego <laughs> we we are big as a camel and we won't be enter the kingdom of heaven but uh, you know kingdom of heaven is the presence of god and if we are, if i need to enter the presence of god to enter the kingdom of heaven i need to be poor in spirit i need to humble myself and say that lord i'm just nothing lord and when i'm humbling myself to a zero there i can uh, find the path of life because you know the holy spirit will enlighten my path to tread his foot as jesus would have walked through this way 
so that is what we read in psalm 16 11 you will make known to be the path of life that is the way of the cross way new narrow way the way new and living way different the highway of holiness in isaiah 30 uh, 30s we read there 33 i think uh, the way, highway of holiness all these are the same way and uh, you will make known to the path of life when we go through this path of life we will enter where we will come to the presence of god that is what we read there in your presence is fullness of joy in the most holy place in jesus own presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand there are pleasures forever more where the, we have a delight in our spirit this is a superlative joy in contrast to that is hebrews 11:25 which says about the passing pleasures of sin the or whatever the greatest pleasure any sin or the worldly things can offer is just for a fraction of a second or a, just a temporary thing it will be there for some time and after that there will be guilt and emptiness and boredom and uh, bitterness but here there is a fullness of joy in the lord's presence there uh, only through the path of life i can enter and come to this most holy place the very presence of god where i can be one with the lord in my spirit where i can join myself with the lord there that is the bride relationship jesus says to many people who did many miracles and cast out demons and all in the last day matthew 7 22 and 23 i never knew you you will think that oh jesus you are omniscient you should know everybody why are you saying i never knew you what jesus is telling that i did not have this knowing that gnosko bride relationship where i knew you in that fellowship in that intimacy i never knew you in that way even to the foolish virgins in matthew 25 verse 12 i think 12 uh, jesus says i don't know you the wise virgins they had the oil because they had this crushing experience where in their secret life where the self will was broken and the oil of the holy spirit was poured out into their life and there was this fire out of that oil which was the light and the life of jesus and uh, but i said the foolish virgins just had an outward testimony of some light for some time and after that they didn't have any hidden oil where, where you know a life of uh, simple pure devotion to the lord hidden in their personal life they only had that outward meeting attendance and uh, you know just outward testimony in their personal life they didn't have any personal relationship with the lord and jesus is telling them i do not know you uh, you know they are banging on the door and saying that uh, saying to the bridegroom please open to us but uh, jesus said matthew 25 uh, 25 verse 11 says lord don't open up for us jesus said but he answered truly i say to you i do not know you and uh, you know in the song of songs 1 4 we read that Jesus is taking uh, the bridegroom is taking the bride to the chambers that is a most holy place where we we and the lord alone are there where there only we can really know the lord in the most holy place alone with the lord there only the true worship happens that is the lord's desire john 17 24 father whom you have given me be with me where i am in the most holy place wherever you know probably we would be in our workplace in our home in our kitchen in our vinyard or in our ministry or in our uh, you know wherever uh, school or college or hospital wherever we are working wherever whatever place god has placed us or even when we are traveling or in our shops you know, wherever we are there all we can be in fellowship with the lord we can be with the lord we can have that loving relationship with the lord we continue to humble ourselves and become a zero there the holy spirit will Uh, flood our lives continually more and more and we'll become more and more one with the lord and uh, we can move according to the promptings of the holy spirit what a blessed life the lord has called us to shall we close our eyes and pray loving gracious heavenly father thank you lord for this blessed life thank you for the heavenly calling that you have given us lord in the midst of all the pandemic and all the confusion and chaos in the world lord our shelter and our refuge is in you lord jesus you are our rock and fortress you are our everything we want to worship you 
we want to surrender everything to you lord jesus it is our self will it is our self life it is our flesh it is our ego it is our i that is preventing us from having fellowship with you lord jesus break us lord jesus break our self life let the alabaster vial of perfume be broken so that the perfume will spread the house and the aroma of jesus is there for everyone to smell and to be blessed lord break our self life we want to surrender ourselves lord not only now but lord at each and every situation in our life help us to way go the way of the cross to go the way of humility where we recognize that we were crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ who lives in me help us lord jesus to consider ourselves dead to sin and to be alive to you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you cleanse our hearts with your blood flood our hearts with the holy spirit lord bless each one of us for hearing the word and we pray that lord this will be true in each one of our lives and we will be truly your worshipers and truly person people who know you lord jesus the real bride who knows the bridegroom in that intimate fellowship lord just as you long to have fellowship lord help us also instill in us a desire to have more and more deeper fellowship with you and to fulfill the desire of your heart to bring delight to your heart oh lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you thank you father thank you holy spirit in jesus precious sweetest name we pray amen